Okay, this is the standard model of particles and it's just been proven that it's not correct because they, they have just so many things that they can't account for. They finally pretty much gave up. Now, here's where the gauge bosons sit and these are the carriers of these which they call the charged particles. Well, in the real world, everything is made up of nothing more than little bits and pieces and every one of them is is, is going to be an electron which is a dipole but half of it has no charge it appears but it's it's there as like a positive when they're sitting together like like, like this when they smash into something one of them just explodes with power and the other one just stays the way it is that's the gauge boson now i am working right here electron neutrinos i'm working down electrons this is the smallest particles there are. I don't have to dig through all of these things to see if I can find some of these. And that is what CERN is doing. Hey, hello, my friends. Roger Mudfossil University. Today, I have an extremely bold statement that we have exceeded CERN in the results of our light experiments. Now, there is a new, there has to be a new atomic model because the Bohr model is wrong. And they've known about this for a while. They're just finally admitting it, to be honest with you. Now, so this is a new boson appears in nuclear decay break standard model. Uh, here's what the Royal Academy had to say. Okay, this is the Royal Institution in London, and they, um, they're the authorities. There's absolutely no way that we can explain this observation with our current understanding. If All right, so anyway, she went on to why this is a problem, and it's because of leptons and the universality that they had built this model on, and it doesn't work. Okay, I know these, these are over-the-top claims, but I'm saying that we're seeing an electron neutrino showers, because electrons are the things that create these neutrino showers. They're exactly what they're showing, they're looking for. Everything that they've asked for is exactly what I have shown. Well, I've shown the high-speed electron. It was accelerated, there's no question about that. Then I saw, showed how they smashed into ether, and the, um, you know, the particles that are in the air, which creates these showers of electrons. You know, it's called, it starts out by the high-speed particle. Then it creates what's called Cherenkov radiation. The Cherenkov radiation is just like hitting a, with a bowling ball, hitting all your bowling pins, and they go flying every different direction. And that's exactly what we're showing. No difference whatsoever. Okay, let's just read what a, a gauge boson is. It is a force carrier. It carries the force along with it. Um, with, and the force is a bosonic particle that carries any of the fundamental interactions of nature, commonly called forces. All right, so the carrier is what I showed is that black spot. Okay, so my contention right along is all particles have the same charges. They all have the identical same charges, every single particle. They are dipoles. What does that mean? They all have the same patterns they create when you cause them to engage in extreme energetic activities, they create these round circular patterns and all these little special things. Now, why? Because of magnetism. And they're all magnetic in... <laughs> that's just what it is. Now, what, what happens with CERN? They're digging through, through a mountain here to try to find these and we're working with these to start with. We are ahead of CERN. We are so far ahead of them. It's amazing. I'm serious. Now, just to make the quick points, that's the pulse red laser. That's it accelerating. That's the particle. That's the plasma. That's the Cherenkov and the Venturi. That is the Higgs fields coming from the Cherenkov bosons, which are the charged particle carriers and then I can show you the gauge bosons in a second. This is another interaction which gave off a particle that is appears to be smaller than light and that was from that reverse spinner I believe. Now this right here is the bosons and that the dark one is the the gauge boson which carries the white which is the charge. All right? And we're going to see that actually happen. 
Okay, now I know I showed you the photons. The one was dark, one was light, back and back, back and forth. I'm saying that those are literally two electrons. The black part is the charge carrier, which is the gauge bosons. The white part, or, you know, I'm showing it red here, but it would be white, is the explosive part. And here it is in actual full color, my friends. That's the particles coming in. When they hit here, the blue black dots back themselves out and they just sort of roll around on the outside. They haven't concussed. They haven't splashed black everywhere. Look at what happened to the white. The white exploded like a bomb. The black is just little dots. They just say, okay, no problem. Just white, go off and do your things. Explode, have a good time. Smash things, blow up, create heat, do whatever you're going to do. We'll just wait around and come back when you're done. And they come back and then they just go off about their business. That's the first ever seen gauge boson. Now, that will be bigger, and they say they, they, they know that. They're saying it's scalar. They will be bigger if it was green. It will be bigger still if it was blue. It will be bigger still if it's into the particles that smash into you and hurt you. Apparently, they look to me like they're exactly the same size as the other one. They were exactly identical. So I'm, I'm assuming that if there was more of them, they would be just be bigger balls of magnetism. And here's, I'll show you in a toy how electron flooded core works, and then I'll probably leave it at that.